After months of campaigning and nationwide voting, tonight the votes are being tallied. This is a special live edition of EWTN News Nightly for Tuesday, November 8, 2016. Good evening from Washington. Thank you so much for joining us for our special live election 2016 coverage. I'm Brian Patrick. And I'm Lauren Ashburn at our political desk where voting has been extended in key states, including North Carolina. As polls close in other key battleground states, Trump supporters are gathered at the Hilton Midtown Hotel in Manhattan in hopes of Make America Great Again victory party. And not far away at New York City's Jacob Javits Center, Clinton supporters anticipate the election of America's first woman president. Well, polls are now closed in some key states. Ohio, Florida, New Hampshire, Michigan, Pennsylvania, some of the ones to watch, Lauren. And as of now, neither presidential nominee has earned enough electoral votes to win. Joining me now, our Catholic analyst for the evening, Mercedes Schlapp, a Republican strategist. Thanks for joining us, Mercy. Great to be here from New York City. Well, it's leaning toward Clinton. It's leaning toward Trump. It's really not leaning toward either of them. This is going to be a long wow. night. What does it mean for issues important it is. like pro-life and religious liberty? Well, I have to tell you, I think that there's definitely a message being sent out there that, first of all, the Democrats really thought that this was going to be a landslide election. And what we're seeing is a nail-biting race in places like Florida and North Carolina. Uh, so I think for uh, for what we what we're, I'm interested to see is the Catholic vote, how it came out in these battleground states. We know that Trump focused very hard on reaching out to the Catholic voters on issues of religious liberties, on the fact that we're going to have these appointments in the Supreme Court that would be critical in ensuring that we are able to protect. Uh, the religious liberties, as well as the pro-life issue, which, as we know, Hillary Clinton has stated time and time again that uh, she pretty much has an extreme position on, on abortion and not in line with where the majority of Americans and, quite frankly, the majority of Catholics are on this issue. So I think uh, it, it, I think right now, Lauren, it's, it's, uh, it's although day after day the polls have shown that Clinton has the edge, um, it really shows that it's a lot closer than pundits and people have been saying and have been since they have been saying from the very beginning you know when the first polls closed Trump scored victories in reliably Republican Indiana Kentucky West Virginia Oklahoma Tennessee South Carolina and Clinton won deep blue states like Vermont Delaware Maryland Massachusetts and New Jersey and now we're keeping an eye on battleground states we're going to switch to Pennsylvania one of the most hotly contested Senate rates is races is there and pro-life Senator Pat Toomey who won by just 80,000 votes last time is battling environmentalist Katie McGinty. Jason Calvi has spent many days on the campaign trail in Pennsylvania for us, and he joins us from Senator Toomey's headquarters. Jason. Lauren, the polls have just closed here in Pennsylvania. About an hour ago, this is the party just getting underway here for Senator Pat Toomey, who hopes to be this becomes his victory party. There was a great mystery during this campaign. Who would he vote for? He wouldn't say if he'd vote for the GOP nominee, Donald, uh, Donald Trump, but just about 6.45, about an hour and 15 minutes before the polls closed, we do know who he voted for, Donald Trump. We've been speaking to voters across the state, both Trump and Clinton supporters. I think it's going to be wonderful for the country uh, to have a woman president. I'm not sure why I'm not more enthusiastic. So what was the experience like voting today? Uh, it was great. It was first woman president. Very exciting. Once you have kids, it's a complete game changer. You would never think that way again about abortion. And hopefully, and that's why I, I, I support him. We don't have any estimates on the winner here in Pennsylvania. It's just too close to call. But the people here are optimistic that Senator Pat Toomey will once again go back to the Senate. Lauren? Jason, tell me, why did Pat Toomey not come out and say he was voting for Trump earlier? What was that, what was that strategy about? I spoke to a few of, I spoke to one of his campaign staffers today, 
and he said they just don't want to talk about this issue. They're not going to litigate this issue of why he refused to say if he was even going to vote for Donald Trump. But there are a couple of points to keep in mind. He does need Donald Trump supporters to win re-election here in Pennsylvania, so he doesn't want to alienate them by criticizing Donald Trump or, or by saying he's not going to vote for him. At the same time, he needs to reach out to those moderates in the, the, the crucial battleground areas in this battleground state, which is the Philadelphia suburbs, and he doesn't want to alienate the moderates there who may be turned off by <laughs> Donald Trump. Lauren? Well, it's a tightrope, and we'll see if it works for him. What about voter turnout in Pennsylvania? Still too early to get a good sample of how the voter turnout has been, but we do have a lot of stories of, of long lines. We saw some, some pictures uh, taken from above, uh, and it showed long lines at various polling places. When we, when we were visiting the polling places today uh, around uh, late morning to, to early afternoon, the, there were no long lines. Uh, people that we were talking to say there wasn't much enthusiasm even. Some Democrats voting for Clinton said there just wasn't enthusiasm for their candidate this year. We'll see once we get the actual results uh, if that is true, if, if there wasn't as high of a voter turnout as expected. But the Secretary of State said he was predicting about 80 percent of the registered voters would vote in the state of Pennsylvania. Lauren? Okay, Jason Calvi, thanks so much. We'll check back with you later in the show. Let's turn back to Republican strategist Mercedes Schlapp joining us live via satellite from New York City. Mercedes, you heard what Jason had to say, and Catholics make up three out of the 10 voters in Pennsylvania, and they're very important. What do you think is going to happen with the, with the Senate? Well, I think Toomey has a good shot of, of pulling out, being able to win in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, I think the states we're looking at right now is obviously, you know, Illinois has been called uh, it looks like we, the Republicans will likely lose Wisconsin. Uh, the one I'm taking, keeping a close eye on besides the Toomey race is obviously the one in New Hampshire, which is with Kelly Ayotte. Uh, that's, the, that's a situation where she was struggling back and forth, not knowing how to deal with the Trump phenomenon. And I think it, it could have hurt her a bit. So we'll be watching closely that race, which it, it, it's obviously a toss-up right now. And then Nevada, uh, you know, heck is... Is, is in the game and he could pull it off, but it's all going to depend on whether there was a large enough turnout in other areas like in northern Nevada that could help um, Heck uh, win, win in Nevada. So I do feel we'll probably, the GOP will probably lose uh, three seats. I, think, I do think we'll maintain the majority. I, just by the way this election is shaping up, which is a fact that uh, you know, for moments, there was moments there that we thought that Trump had no chance in Florida and all of a sudden it just and looks now like it's that's a nail biter in states like North Carolina. That's right. So I think just seeing how this is uh, shaping up, I think that the GOP will survive in the Senate control, but it will be by a very slim majority. And the other state, Brian, uh, that we just talked about, New Hampshire, is also a state that we are covering. And Lauren, we have had a crew there for the past two days covering that key Senate race. In fact, incumbent Republican Kelly Ayotte is locked in a tight race with New Hampshire's Democratic Governor Maggie Hase or Hassan. Wyatt Goolsby is joining us live tonight from Concord with the latest there. Wyatt? Brian, this is not only one of the closest races we've ever covered, it's also one of the most expensive. Now, we should say all of the polls here in New Hampshire have closed. The last remaining polls closed a little bit over an hour ago, but it is still too early to say who is going to win. Again, this is incumbent Republican uh, Kelly Ayotte facing off against the current governor of New Hampshire, Maggie Hassan. Governor Hassan is hoping to oust Senator Ayotte from her seat, she, but Senator Hassan has the support of First Lady Michelle Obama, as well as the abortion provider Planned Parenthood. Now, we've been following Senator Ayotte these last few days. We should say that Ayotte has told us she is pro-life. Ayotte says while she's tired, she has enjoyed canvassing the state on the campaign trail. It was a great experience and, you know, getting out, you know, being at the Red Arrow Diner, uh, one in the morning and, and seeing folks there. So it's great to be out uh, through the night in New Hampshire. And I love grassroots campaigning, so it, it was fun meeting people and, and shaking those last minute hands, right? And as we say, the final results have not come in yet. We can tell you, though, that the local ABC affiliate in Manchester is reporting with eight, only 8% 8 of the precincts uh, a very favorable advantage to Governor Hassan. But again, it's with only 8% of the precincts reporting to this point. So it's just 
too close to call. We should say that we're actually coming to you live from inside uh, Senator Ayotte's watch party here. And we're, really the mood has been, from people that I've been talking to, has been optimistic. People realize that this is a very close campaign. Real Clear Politics uh, polls have said this is within a 1.5 percentage, uh, basically a toss-up, essentially. Uh, but they're overall optimistic. Brian? So, Wyatt, you mentioned Senator Ayotte is pro-life. What is her position on funding or defunding Planned Parenthood? Well, this has been a big issue throughout this entire campaign. Uh, Gov uh, Senator Ayotte has been the subject of a number of attacks by Planned Parenthood, and she's had to come back and, and explain exactly what her position is. She believes that taxpayer funding should go to women's uh, go to women's health, but it should be divided up among a number of different organizations, uh, women's uh, health clinics, not just to Planned Parenthood. Brian? Wyatt Goolsby in New Hampshire. Thank you, Wyatt. And in uh, Lauren, that's just one of a handful of key races that the uh, political balance of the U.S. Senate is really uh, up for grabs tonight. Yeah, the election, Brian, as you know, is going to have a big impact on issues important to Catholics, like the pro-life issue you just mentioned. Mercedes Schlapp joins us again from New York City. Mercedes, Trump made a big push for Catholic votes, sending out flyers, appointing a Catholic board. Did he mobilize this important white Catholic vote with his messaging? You know, I think he did, but I, I, I want to say that part of it came from uh, what we saw with the WikiLeak emails from the campaign Clinton advisors that uh, talked about Catholics in a sense of calling Catholics backwards. And the fact that they were, the, the, their, the goal of the liberals to move forward on organizations that would plant the Catholic revolution. This is the Catholic spring. And uh, I think it was very disturbing to so many practicing Catholics that you would have liberal organizations and the government and, and a campaign push forward uh, these ideas that would basically, and these groups that would basically try to undermine the tenets of the Catholic faith. That is serious. That is basically a threat uh, on our Catholicism. And I do believe that Trump did have an opportunity and his team to t push that message out. Uh, obviously, doing the interview with EWTN is important. He understands that the, the outreach to Catholics was key uh, across the country. And I think that at the end, it did benefit him when you started seeing the polls break in his favor with you have over 14 percent of Catholics uh, supporting Donald Trump in this election. In states like Ohio, Florida, and a slew of others, white Catholics make up about one in five. And this is still a, a tight race and not a mandate for Clinton, not a mandate for Trump that we're going to see. Do you think that he is going to pull this off? You know, I have to tell you, I'm, we're watching these election results closely. I mean, both my husband Matt and I have uh, been involved in presidential campaigns since 2000. Uh, and this one has really been shocking because the early polls definitely showed Hillary with such an advantage. And he's just been able to ship a, chip away at it. And in states like Florida, we're seeing the Cuban-American vote coming out strongly for Donald Trump. That is something that I think is a critical constituent for him, considering that uh, you had over 500,000 Hispanics early voting in Florida. So I think that you're starting to see the, this dynamic occur uh, where it will be a lot tighter than people think and that actually he could maybe pull this off. Uh, this might be the November surprise that we've been waiting for. But again, it's too soon to know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, Hillary Clinton will argue and her team that they have the better ground game, the better organization. And obviously, the electoral map favors them right from the beginning. That's so right. This is that definitely is true. has been an uphill battle for Donald Trump. It has been. Thank you so much, Mercedes Schlapp in New York. We'll check back with you in a bit. Coming up, viewing the U.S. elections from abroad, Mary Shovlin joins us from Rome. And life on the line, how today's election could impact the Supreme Court and pro-life movement. Thank you for joining us for our live special election night coverage. I'm Brian Patrick. And I'm Lauren Ashburn. It seems like this day would never get here, Brian. I know polls show the electorate is tired and cranky. And I wonder if the same is true internationally. Well, Mary Shovlin reports from Rome where Americans and Italians are watching the U.S. elections at the U.S. Embassy. The viewing party is still going strong, as you can see behind me here, as we continue 
to wait for the final results to come in. Many people here in this room excited for either candidate. I have to say, a lot of them excited to see maybe the first woman president. A lot of them excited to see real change through Donald Trump, a political outsider. Many opinions to be had here in Italy. Italy, of course, one of our greatest allies uh, as a government stood by us so much through the years. There's a lot of goodwill in this room. So we will continue to wait and see as the results come in. But Brian, I can ensure you here from Europe, the world is watching and waiting. Thank you, Mary Shovlin in Rome. And Lauren, there are key policy issues at stake in this election, fundamental for Catholic voters. The pro-life cause tops that list and is a huge factor in this election. We're lucky to have Marjorie Dannenfelser joining us here in studio. She's the president of the Susan B. Anthony List. That's a group that helps elect pro-life lawmakers. Welcome to our program tonight. Thanks I for joining us. I love being with you. Yeah, I love being with especially you. Especially tonight. Yes, especially tonight. Um, you know, why are these results so important to the future of the pro-life movement? Well, it speaks to the foundation of our government, how it actually works and whether it will work. The first right, the fun of every other right, is the right to life. It's founded in the Constitution. We were given a, a process to elect people that would protect that right. The Senate is, is vital to uh, making sure that that occurs because it, it has to confirm and um, confirm uh, Supreme Court nominees. And the presidency, obviously, is a place where, like we saw with Lincoln, can advocate for the rights of unborn children um, and anyone who is uh, downtrodden. And so those two entities, especially this election, are vital. What happens in the Senate and the presidency? If Clinton wins mm -hmm. and gains a Democratic Senate, how can we guard against the abortion agenda? I mean, it's very, it's very close right now. This race is very tight at 9-18. Mm -hmm. right. Well, so far we know that the House, tonight we know the House has been clinched for the, for the pro-life cause. We have a majority in the way that we have before. If we have a Democratic Senate, a pro-choice majority, a pro-abortion uh, majority, we will really depend upon the House once again and the leadership there. If we have a Democratic president, this particular Democratic nominee who was adamant about her advocacy on uh, uh, for abortion, the House is going to be our linchpin, and we are going to really depend upon whoever is the Speaker of the House, whether it's Paul Ryan or someone else, and the caucuses there that really are closest to the will of the people. Mm -hmm. So that is where we'll fight, also in the state legislatures. How has how does this pro-life movement, how does the pro-life movement need to be more proactive in recruiting mm -hmm. leaders, uh, people who are going to run? Right. Lauren, I think that's the most important question of the night. And I think that is what informs our decisions about how we engage in the pro-life movement in the future. To the extent that we have not yet engaged with potential leaders that will run, um, give them benefits, meaning being behind them, leading, helping lead them along the way from the very beginning, helping with their funding, helping with their, their muscle for their political machines. We have to be there for them from the very beginning, including when they're in the House, including when they're in the Senate, when they're governors, at every step along the way, and in the primary process, when we're choosing a presidential nominee. Every single step along the way was smart from the founder's perspective, and we need to look at that and how it works and engage early. Okay, Marjorie Dannenfelser, president of the <laughs> Susan B. Anthony List, thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you. And Brian, voters will decide a number of important ballot initiatives in many states. They include assisted suicide, recreational and medical marijuana use, among others. But the question of character and moral integrity has been front and center in this election. It's good to have Chad Pecknold, theologian with the Catholic University of America, back with us. Chad, how do you think the reaction to the results tonight will set the tone for what comes next in America? Well, America is a country that's built on peaceful transitions. And so concession speeches are a really important thing to watch. If you are giving a graceful concession speech, you're holding up civic trust. If you're not and you're asking about rigged elections or lawsuits, pending, uh, there's a sense of things being uncertain going forward. I wonder if you were surprised by the anti-Catholic bigotry that was revealed in this election cycle. Uh, I mean, one is never really too surprised by Catholic uh, bigotry. Uh, Christ himself told us that we'd get some. But uh, the Clinton campaign, I think, uh, did mark a sort of new low for trying to cultivate uh, and sow divisions within the church. Uh, 
And that is a disappointment and something to think about going forward that they're trying to convert us as much as we want to convert them. Well, Chad, tonight everybody's saying, thank God this thing is over. I mean, so many of us are tired of the election. Do you think that we're also tired of the incivility of this campaign and this election cycle? Well, I think clearly uh, the, the polls show this, that we're all exhausted by this election season. And one of the, the silver linings of that is that I think we all recognize that we're either in this together or we aren't. Um, we have to uh, be a virtuous people who love our neighbors as well as God, and uh, we need to uh, recognize that hidden among our political enemies are also our friends and our neighbors. Dr. Chad Pecknold with The Catholic University of America. Chad, thanks for staying with us tonight. Thanks for having me. Up next, election results at this hour, and the stories will follow into tomorrow. Good to have you with us tonight. I'm Brian Patrick with Lauren Ashburn, and Lauren, polls have closed now in 41 states. We are still waiting to project a winner in the presidential race. We're also following key races that could determine the control of the Senate. And the polls closed in this crucial state. Jason Calvi is in Pennsylvania. Right, this is a crucial state. We think about the future of the Senate, whether it's issues like immigration, gun control, Planned Parenthood funding, all at stake tonight. And right here is where we could have a very important decision about the future of the Senate. Looking at the polls that have just been coming in, polls did close here at 8 o'clock, and we have about 12% of the precincts reporting, and right now the Democrat is winning by about two points. But this is very interesting. Donald Trump is beating Hillary Clinton right here in Pennsylvania. He's made quite a play here going after the state, which hasn't voted Republican for president since 1988. Another key battleground state is New Hampshire, where Wyatt Goolsby is tonight. Wyatt? And we are here in the state capital of New Hampshire, the very happy crowd at this point. We are still awaiting the final numbers here in the tight Senate race in New Hampshire. We can tell you the latest CNN poll, the average of polls, has the incumbent Kelly Ayotte in the lead, 48% over Governor Hassan at 47% averaging there. Again, we're continuing to follow the latest updates here in New Hampshire. Now back to you, Lauren. Okay, Wyatt, thank you very much. You know, religious liberty is under fire. EWTN and others like the Little Sisters of the Poor are suing the Obama administration so they don't have to offer abortions as part of the health care coverage. Let's go to Mercedes Schlapp, who is in New York City. Mercedes, what do you see happening on this front if Clinton wins or if Trump wins? Well, I think Trump has made it very clear where he stands on religious liberties and his defense of religious liberties. And quite frankly, Lauren, it starts with the Supreme Court. We see uh, he would be able to fill that Justice Scalia seat, which is incredibly important. Uh, he's laid out the type of justices he would uh, appoint, and they would be strict constitutionalists. And I believe that you would find uh, individuals who would really be supportive of religious liberties. We know that at the end, and I think this is why so many Catholics at the, w came out and voted, it's because of the fact that you're going to see that the Supreme Court is that final stop, right? It's that place where religious liberties can and will be protected, that and in the federal courts. Uh, you know, we saw in Massachusetts, for example, that, that churches uh, were being, uh, with lawsuits on the transgender issue. It gets very complicated yes. when you have the government suing the churches. You're right. Thank you so much, Mercedes Schlapp, Republican strategist joining us from New York. And Marjorie Dannenfelser is still here, president of the Susan B. Anthony List at our political desk. The Supreme Court, as we just heard Mercedes say, is a really big concern for voters. What kind of judges do you think Hillary Clinton will appoint? I think she's been very clear. There will be judges that uphold Roe versus Wayne. Uh, Trump has said he will appoint only pro-life judges. And something that I've heard many times from people who don't think the presidential race is important is that, you know, maybe we just take a pass on this one. It's too late to affect people's uh, uh, votes right now. But the idea that somehow in the future that we will uh, think that future generations can okay. turn the Supreme Court in a different direction it's just presuming upon future generations. Right. It's a huge impact. All right. It? Thank you so much, Marjorie Dannenfelser of Susan B. Anthony List. For uh, Brian, back over to you. Thank you, Lauren. For Lauren Ashburn and the EWTN News Nightly team, I'm Brian Patrick. Tune in tomorrow morning to Morning Glory, 7 a.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio. We'll have up-to-the-minute election results. Watch full team coverage tomorrow right here on EWTN News Nightly. 
Good night and God bless as we leave you with scenes from the Cl Trump and Clinton watch parties in New York City. <laughs>